Atlas, leave it. She goes, oh, you have a very aggressive dog. She said that she couldn't work with him. So I did try to rehome him once and he wasn't even there 24 hours. And I'm just like, you know, this dog needs me. What's the deal? What's the stick? Well, I got Atlas at five weeks old. The story that I got was that he, uh, they specifically bred, he's Rottweiler and German Shepherd. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but apparently the dad killed all of the puppies but Atlas. And then they said the mom wouldn't nurse or have anything to do with the puppy, so that's why they put him into a foster home. What are you dealing with the most reactivity, right? I would assume it's just reactive to people and dogs. Yes, unless okay. he knows them. Like my children can come with their dogs and he's fine with them. But if someone that he doesn't know comes to the house, it's a whole different right. story. He's good with me, but he I feel like he doesn't know his boundaries. So I have several bruises and it's not because he's trying to hurt me, but he's just so rough. And so even when he plays, he plays very rough. You know, the German Shepherds are so many different variances of them. And if you get a working line that really wants to work instead of be a pet and doesn't really want to be in the house, wants to go outside and work and find the ball and do obedience and run and listen and not really a good pet. And then you take that with like a Rottweiler and you cut it in between. It's like you're going to get a dog that's going to be overprotective. But the interesting thing with breeds is it's not consistent because there's so many variances. Right. You know, like you could get a Rottweiler that's a mush that really doesn't want to do anything. You can get a German Shepherd, same thing. Like we have probably three German Shepherds in daycare right now and they're all just big vocal babies. I've never had a reactive dog before. I had a miniature Dachshund for 13 years and she passed away and it took me a whole year to get another dog. Just so happened that this dog, you know, came along, was a rescue sure. and so yeah, that's yeah, how we ended big here. Big difference. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that that's what a lot of people encounter when they get a reactive dog is they're like, what do I do? It's a very hard contrast where you get other dogs in your past that are great. They don't ever even need training. They're just great dogs. And then yeah. you get a reactive dog and you're like, well, now what do I do here? What's yeah. this? And that's where people will f find my videos and right. realize like, oh, you know, there's equipment that's involved, there's certain training protocols that's involved, all that stuff. All right, you guys, I wanted to let you know we are doing a really, really, really cool giveaway on the Members Club. I'm actually gonna pick two people this month and at the end of next month to fly to their house and train their dog for a day. All you guys have to do to simply enter to win is be part of the Members Club. That's all you have to do, links in the description below. So we'll start off with just some of your relationship stuff because everything that is making him do the things that you don't like is because of everything that you're doing, which you know. Yeah. So I we're going to go that. over it. So like there, that's the problem, right? So you just asked him to sit because he was growling and you asked him two or three times and then he did it and then he held it for about seven seconds and then got up. So when, he, when you ask him to do a behavior, you want to keep him into that behavior until you release him, especially if a dog is like, oh yeah, let me go punch that guy in the face. And you're like, hey, no, stay here. He's like, okay. All right, now where is he? That's what's just happening. Remember how you said like he's pushy? Those are the things that will allow him and your relationship to, to basically do what he wants. So when you ask him to do something, I wouldn't ask him two, three, four times. I would say his name, I would ask him to do it. And if you ask him to do it, make sure you follow through with it until you okay. then break him. You've seen some videos where the dogs are crashing into this door and shaking, it's rocking back and forth like this. Right. He's kind of like tough guy in there. You know, like, hey. Right? So let me see the leash. Just walk back to the door and we'll see what he does. Because he's probably going to be like, no, no, where are you going? <laughs> right? So, so you see how his behavior is now? The tough guyness is, is, the tough guy's not as tough anymore good boy good sit good he's only reactive because he's on the other end of the leash with you again like i open the gate i'm like all right you want to be tough he's like no i was okay break break good boy he's like no no, no, no I, I i i i didn't mean that i was just you know that's kind of how that went what side do you normally handle him well <laughs> have a stop stop I was on the right side, but when I walked him one time, he was reactive towards another dog. 
and I pulled all the muscle in my arm. Okay. So I've been going to therapy for that, so okay. now I've been using the left. Left, so put it in your left, and then I want you to do the best you can to pretend he's not on the leash. And then put your leash down, relax. Now off. correct off. off, off. Good, good, see, now walk. Choke up on your leash a little bit, so get a little closer to him. Now keep walking, and then put your arm down. Good, and then you're walking to the there and then back, and forget him, just kind of feel him out, okay? Now come back this way, and yep, just walk right towards me. Good, and just, use, yep, just a little, perfect. I'm gonna give you a point of view of the dog. He's going, hey, what are we doing here? Hey, what, can we leave yet? Hey, mom, let's go. He doesn't know what to do, he's got no direction. He's, he, it's, everything is on his terms. So what you did is you grabbed the leash and you go, come on, we're gonna go here. We're gonna go here. We're gonna go here. And you're not looking at him and he's looking at you and he's looking at you and then you stop and he's like, okay. And then he lays down. Turn and heel. say heel. Good. Now release your pressure and stop. So when you're, when you're handling him, look, try to look forward. Don't look at him. Don't give him any pressure. And when you're asking him to heal, you're not giving him pressure un unless he doesn't heal. Your objective is to keep that le leash as loose as you possibly can. So when you turn, you say heel, and he doesn't, you just give him a little flick. So heel, forward, heel. and then good heel, and then turn, heel. heel, and then reward. Good heel. Good heel. Good heel, buddy. Now turn again. Heel. Release your pressure, though. Good heel. Good heel. Good heel. Turn again. Heel. Heel. A little bit of pressure, a little bit of pressure. Yep, that's good. Good. good now heel. turn again. Heel. Heel. Yes, buddy. Slow down and stop. Perfect. That was much better. It's one of the best tune-ups I've seen. It's really good, it's saying a lot. Um, so, break. Lace, I totally understand how that's like very beneficial. How is it beneficial outside um, in like a day-to-day -day walk scenario if um, Atlas or Tilly was getting a little more like reactive? What would the place be? Would the place be like beside us or would the place be? No. It would be more or less what we're going to start developing after the place command, which okay. would be the stay, okay. right? So when we say, hey, sit and stay, yeah. that stay is going to be what we're working on here. So it's not necessarily we're out in the trail and there's a dog coming and we're like, oh, go place on this random yeah. piece of grass. That's not what we're doing. Okay. The place is just part of the development of, again, like if it was an athlete, it would be everything from how fast you are, how fast your eyes movement, how fast you can catch, how fast you can get down, get back up, how fast you can hit, your, all of that stuff. It, it kind of comes together in one unison. So when we're talking about place, it's again, think about little picture, big picture. I talk about this and if you've watched one video of mine, you've heard me say this before, because I mention it in every single video. It's micro and macro. So when we're asking a dog to go to their place, again, the small picture is, is we're learning a new behavior, we're learning place. But the bigger picture is, is you're like, you do this and then you do this and then I'm gonna be here. No, 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 you, you have, so he's constantly like, oh, okay, I'm, you're taking direction. You're asking, you're asking him to do something and they, they can't do something differently, right? So again, it's, I want you to do this behavior. You're like, okay. And it's just putting you into the driver's seat. It's a great question, but essentially what it is, is it's more of like, I want you to do this and that's it. Yeah. And so the place is just, a, is a task and then holding them accountable, okay. more importantly. Because the overall picture is going to be, you have to listen to me, no matter if I tell you to down or sit or stay or leave it. And as we get better at it, I'm gonna start introducing, your two dogs will be in the same room together working on these things. But if they don't know these things, then it's just like, let's get them together. Oh, they don't like, they don't like other dogs or whatever. Well, let's just try to, you know, it's just not gonna work like that. With, hey, let's do this instead. Let's do this instead, inappropriate. No, yes, good, bad, etc. When you come around, you should be able to take that left leg and literally turn and go right back that way. You're, you're having to use the whole room to turn. Yeah. So when you come out, take that left leg and cut him off. It's like a, it's, it's kind of a loophole or a cheap cheat code to kind of crack what we're doing here is okay. you want him engaged with you. Right now when you're moving forward, he's starting to look up at you because you're starting to move your body around. So see how, see how you're running into him? Yeah. You got to swing that left leg. Heel, 
boom, and right back. What you're doing is you're hitting him right in his chest here, you're turning around and kicking him in the face here, and then you're spinning around. So you, you want to just be more agile with that and, and pay attention and be mindful to what you're doing on the leash. Good heel, Atlas. And then a little pressure back, and then use your left leg to cut him off. Better, keep walking. So when you're turning right now, you're doing a combination of like this and then this, and you're getting caught right here. So you, you wanna use back pressure and your left leg at the, almost at the same, you're like pressing the gas and the brake at the same time. Come out like this, back pressure, and then boom. And then boom, and you just go back, you go back this way. He's, he yields leash pressure good, so he's a little easier. But when you come out, I want you to just swing this whole left leg like this and go, see, wa watch what happens when I start going fast with him and I start using my leg. If I just back pressure, boom, now I'm right back. So if he was reactive to a dog there, boop, or even there, boop, heel, good, heel, good boy, sit, good man. I know. Okay, break. So I'm pretty much just cutting his body off as yes. well. Yes, try it with him. Reggie, heel. So you. pull him back a little bit and then use your left leg to turn. There you go. Now move forward. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what this lady's doing. Just, yep. And just swing that leg, really be like, boom. Like splash that leg, there you go, that's better. Good, and then good. It's gonna be some work for me too, Oh, I it guess. takes time, it <laughs> takes time. This is your test. So we have proven if you do the right things and you handle the right way, you will be fine. But if you don't handle the right way and you kind of go back to where you were, the dog will then get just as reactive as when you guys came in. A couple reminders is when other dogs are around, do not stop and look at the dog when you're reacting and sit there and wait because it's the first thing we talked about when we were working on the first session is your momentum tells the dog what we're gonna be doing and what we're not. So if your dog starts to react, don't sit there and hang out for 10 seconds and then wait for him to come. The other thing is, is when you, when you are starting to see building, you are starting to see this very stimulated, locked in behavior. Disengage and do your, your um, decompression exercises where you're moving the dog one way. You're saying, so if we build, go, hey, come here, good boy, come. And you, and you kind of reset the dog that way. And that's where, that's where you're gonna start to see that uh, building to minimize after, when you do that, you start to bring that down. He's very worked up right now. Yeah, sure, well, yeah, all those dogs. Yeah. Absolutely. But this is like reality, right? Heel. Get to the middle of your leash and then right now turn. Here. Go the other way. Heel. Heel. Yes, good heel. Good heel. Now go the other good way. Heel. Heel. Yes, good, good boy. boy. Inside turn. Turn turn inside to him. Heel. There you go. See how you good change heel. and that happens. But if you're tight and you're using two hands and you're ch you're choking him before he does anything, that's where he's going to get worked up. Yeah, now move forward a little bit right there. That's how you want to be. And I would just hang out right there. And you, you can watch him as his attention starts to shift. And if he starts to shift, just, hey buddy, come. Just, just diffuse him away. Good boy. Good boy. Good job. Sit. Good sit. Good sit, buddy. Good man. Good, Good. job. So just remember. It's me. It's, I'm so nervous 100%. that he's gonna go after someone that. I know. 100%, but that's why I wanted to take him. So two things, you get to breathe and you get to see, you almost have to just forget. That he's reactive? Yeah, I mean, the absolute worst case scenario happens is when he reacts, he goes to the end of the leash and you pull him back. So try to just lose all that baggage and move forward. He wants to be with you, he doesn't want to react. He does not want to do that. He feels like he has to. So when he starts, when, he, when, when you feel like maybe he's starting to build, Hey buddy, come on. And he's like, great, I don't want to react. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Click here to subscribe to my channels to see more videos just like this.